the JAMA Network. Hi, I'm Andrew Chan. I'm an associate professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School, and I'm a gastroenterologist at Massachusetts General Hospital. Much is known about the effect of aspirin in the prevention of heart disease, and also emerging data has really shown that aspirin can prevent colorectal cancer. But much less is known about the effect of aspirin on other cancer types, and that's an important question given the potential ramifications that aspirin might have on our overall public health. We did this study because recently the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force recommended that aspirin be considered for prevention of both colorectal cancer and heart disease in certain individuals. So we wanted to understand what would be the potential impact of a large population taking aspirin on a regular basis. We used data from two large prospective cohorts of both men and women who have been giving us very detailed information on their use of aspirin over time and have also provided us information on their diagnoses of various diseases such as heart disease and cancer. And what we found is that individuals that took aspirin on a regular basis did have a lower incidence of cancer, about a 3% lower incidence of developing any type of cancer. Much of that cancer benefit was actually seen in developing cancers of the colon and the rectum, as well as other cancers in the GI tract. So although that sounds like a fairly small percentage, i.e. a 3% percentage decrease, from an absolute scale that's actually quite significant given that there are a lot of cancers that occur in this population and that cancer is the second leading cause of death in the U.S. We understand that colonoscopy screening, for example, is uh, an effective means of prevention. And we have seen declines in the incidence of colorectal cancer in the U.S. population. And it's felt that colonoscopy has been uh, successful in large part uh, in reducing colon cancer rates uh, in the U.S. But there still is a substantial proportion of individuals in the U.S. that don't undergo screening. So we wanted to understand potentially what would be the impact of aspirin above and beyond screening. We found that uh, if you really look at the population as a whole, uh, aspirin could potentially prevent, uh, you know, a substantial proportion of cancers uh, in the U.S. population, even amongst people that undergo screening, as well as individuals that un don't undergo screening. And so the population level impact could be quite substantial. What our study really found was, uh, was that aspirin potentially has a substantial effect on preventing cancer in a large U.S. population and that this effect is something that is complementary to the effects of screening in cancer prevention. Taken together, the overall impact on a population could be substantial on an absolute scale. The next steps in our research really has to, un has to be, I think, further studies in other populations uh, to confirm our findings, but also, I think, to look at data that will be emerging in the next five to 10 years from other clinical trials that are currently being done of aspirin in chronic disease prevention. And I think in looking through that data, we're hopeful that these data will be also validated in these other types of studies and that uh, there will be a, a strengthening evidence base for the use of aspirin in a broader context. I think we also need to understand uh, how does aspirin actually affect uh, not only cancer rates but also heart disease and how do those weigh against potentially the risks of taking aspirin long term. So understanding uh, also the effect of aspirin t over the long term on risks of developing complications from use such as, as gastrointestinal bleeding. So I think going, uh, getting a very uh, a strong evidence base around the risk benefit calculus for individual pac patients will be an important next step in determining whether we should be re making recommendations that are broader.